Hi, friends, I invite you to pray with us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, on this fifth Sunday in the holy season of Lent, we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, and all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness, in the greatness of your compassion. Wipe out my offense, thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew. 
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory Glory to you O lord some greeks who had come to worship at the passover feast came to philip who was from bethsaida in galilee and asked him sir we would like to see jesus philip went and told andrew then andrew and philip went and told jesus jesus answered them The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. But whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The song for this Sunday, uh, the portion that we heard, is from the 51st Psalm. And it is the story of David after he had committed the most horrible sins of adultery and then murder. David was chosen as king when he was only when he was just a, a small youngster herding sheep. But yet God, God was the one who chose him to be king of Israel. He fought many battles, 
and won them. But because of his, the acclamation that he received, he was hated by King Saul, who tried to kill him. But David prevailed and became king. This, in this moment, his, 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 his army was in battle, but he was home upon the uh, uh, sun bathing on, on his roof. And when he woke up, he looked around and on another roof, he saw a woman bathing and uh, lust took over. He had her brought to him, had relations with her, and then sent her home. She informed him that she was pregnant. And then he tried to wiggle his way out of it. He sent for her husband in battle, brought him home and entertained him and so on, and told him to go home for the night. But her, the husband was a very humble man. He said, what right do I have to be at home sleeping with my wife when my colleagues are all risking their lives on the front line? He refused. And then David, David even made him drunk from wine, but he still wouldn't sleep at home. He went back to battle and David sent word to the commander-in-chief of the battle that this individual was to be placed in the very front of the fighting. And then at a certain point, as the enemy attacked them, the rest of David's army were to pull back, leaving this man alone. Well, he was successful. The man was killed. And David thought he was in the clear. But a prophet, Nathan, came to see him and told him the story of, uh, you know, the two men who were living nearby. One was a wealthy individual with all kinds of uh, uh, animals. But, and he was putting on a feast for his friends. The other man was a poor man. He was, all he had was a little, a little lamb that he was crazy about. But didn't the guy, rich guy, he did not pick it, a, 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 a lamb from his own flock. Oh no, he took the poor man's little lamb. And when David heard that said, he was furious. He said, that man should be killed, should be put to death. And then David, then Nathan said the words, that man is you. And it really struck home. David realized that there was no wiggling out of his crimes. And he gave expression to the finest act of charity, act of sorrow that I have ever come across. Have mercy on me, O God. That's, the, that's why it's called the miserere psalm. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt. And of my sins, cleanse me. A clean heart, create from me, O God. And a steadfast spirit, renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgression, transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. That's the Old Testament. And it tells us two great truths. First of all, the sinfulness of humankind. 
we are all sinners from, from the highest to the lowest. Uh, David committed two of the most greatest sins it's possible to commit. And yet God forgave him. Once David admitted his sins and made his act of sorrow, he was forgiven and went on to do great things for God. Looked up to as one of the great, greatest leaders in the Old Testament. It also brings out, of course, the indescribable depth and length of the forgiveness of God. Turn to the New Testament, and there you have the story of the prodigal son, a good for nothing, who went away and spent all his, his father's money, and then when he was starving, went home hoping to get a job as, as a, an employee. And God made, the man made a feast for him. Now that power to forgive was passed on from, from Jesus unto his apostles, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven. Thus giving us this great, great, great sacrament of reconciliation. One of, one of the great, well, after the Eucharist, one of the greatest sacraments. So that no matter what we do, how vile it is. If once we turn to God, forgiveness awaits us. You only have to remember Dismas, the criminal on the cross dying beside Jesus, asking just that Jesus remember him when he came into his kingdom. And Jesus saying, this day you would be with me in paradise. Oh, confession is such a great, great sacrament. This coming Tuesday, I think it's the 27th, isn't it? 23rd. 20, I'm sorry, 23rd. We will have a penance service here at Good Shepherd. We'll have several priests here. This is an opportunity to come. And we hope that as many as possible can come, particularly those who have been away for a long time. And some of them may be ashamed or afraid to go. The confession is not a, is not a torture chamber. Conf it, uh, it, it is not a, a, a court. There are a whole list of things about what we're accused of before. No. Confession is a celebration. If you want to make God happy and you've been away from him, come back. There is more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over the 99 who don't repent. So please, please, please come on Tuesday night. And especially if you know somebody in your family, a friend of yours close to you, who's been away for a long time and who may very well be ashamed to come. Bring him with you. He will go home with a smile on his face. I've told this story before. I was a very young priest, only ordained two or three years in another parish. And I was making my visits at the hospital. I walked down the corridor the doors were empty, of, were, were open, of course. I heard the voice, are you a priest? I went back in. I said, I am. May I help you? Long story short, he'd been away for years. And he was, he was really way down and worried stiff. In a matter of minutes, less than that, I'd heard his confession. And there the teardrops came. He was full of joy. He was elated. And Father Ed will tell, tell you the same thing. We have particular joy when somebody comes to us who's been away a long time or has done something very seriously wrong. 
What a joy it is to be God's instrument in bringing peace and joy and forgiveness to that person. But please appreciate this great sacrament. It's Jesus who here, St. Augustine said it is Jesus who administers the sacraments. We are his agents here. Yeah. He, there'll be joy in heaven and there'll be joy in our own hearts. I love that, that hymn that is based on uh, the story of Hosea in the Old Testament. Come back to me with all your heart. Don't let fear keep us apart. Long have I waited for your coming home to me and living deeply our new life. And as we've been praying this Lenten season, we will now recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Out of the depths we cry to God, trusting that with the Lord there is mercy and the fullness of redemption. For us, the church, that we may die to sin and serve our Lord, becoming like grains of wheat, bearing much fruit in the world around us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For the elect, especially those in our midst, may they always be aware that the Holy Spirit, who will come upon them in the sacraments, will dwell in their hearts eternally. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For our faith community, that we might bring life to those bound by hunger or poverty, physical or mental illness, prejudice or injustice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For all who are ill, including Sheila Lynn, Linda Behrens, Madison Guastella, Sean Michael Pisu, Amanda Mayorga, Yolanda Hurtado, Maria Shi, Jimmy Yap, Roberto Cabello Argandona, and those written in our Book of Intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our <coughs> prayer. For eternal rest of all the deceased, including Randy James Myers, Terry Guastella, Angelito Walter, Dolores Codillo Massareno, William Grace, Mercedes Aguirre, and those written in our Book of Intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. That the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts and all those written in our parish book of intentions may be answered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. God of nations, your people know your miracles. Hear the prayers of our hearts and grant them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and that of all his church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the hosts of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do, Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray to our incredibly merciful Father as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. So we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace. I give you, look not on our sins, Lord, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with and your with spirit. spirit. So our neighbor some sign of peace. Peace, peace be with you. Lamb of God, you, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My dear brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, as we've been doing this entire pandemic, we'll make a spiritual act of communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Just one announcement. As Father Orion eloquently preached, we will have a Lenten reconciliation service this Tuesday, March the 23rd at 7.30 p.m. in the church. If some of you have not been in the church during this pandemic, we only have one entry point. It's right over here by the hall, the hall doors, if you will. We have one door that we enter, one door that we exit, and but everyone is most welcome to join us this Tuesday. And as Father Orion says, there's nothing like receiving the mercy of God. God's mercy is beyond our comprehension, so we invite you to come receive that mercy this Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. in the church. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This holy Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.